what we're going we're gonna to get into tonight, we're going to get into these notes here, but we're also, I was studying this today. Years ago, Dad sang a song, and we played it, and it was uh, one of those, just we did it with the, uh, just the band, and we put it on television, and I remember, uh, I think he would do it with the band, but I, I, he, he preached it, and the, thank you, son. Did you get you one? Uh, we, I, the, the, the part of the song was, thank you, sweetie. At the end of the journey is God. Some of y'all know that's an older song. And I kind of, the tune is kind of like, at the end of the journey, the journey is God. And I don't remember the rest of the words. I just remember that. And the hook that plays at the end of the journey is God. And Daddy didn't write the song, I don't believe. Uh, uh, but he sang the song, and I'm sure the person that wrote the song wrote it with um, the thought process of eternity. And when we get to this life's journey, the end of the journey, there will be God. And, and it's a great song, and, and, and many people today need to hear that because, you know, whether or not they believe it, whether or not they want to agree with it, at the end of the journey is God. I mean, the atheist will no longer be the atheist. Um, they're going to find out there's not 72 virgins waiting on them. Uh, they're going to find out you just don't come back as a cow or a lamppost or a roach or a monkey. No, at the end of the journey is God, and he's going he's to ask you, or I ask you, he's going to kind of show you what you've done with what he's given you while you're here. So uh, tonight, with that thought, I want to take that thought at the end of the journey is God, and, and I want to come at it from a different angle and um, maybe have a little different take on that phrase, at the end of the journey is God. So if you're ready to get started, say amen. amen. All right. So at the end of the journey is God. We've been talking about the blessing of Abraham over the last several weeks. And Deuteronomy 28, uh, if you're already turning your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn there. And I want you to look at something that I believe, we're going, we're going to be basing our foundation on off, off verse 11 in Deuteronomy 28. But verse 1, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God." I want you to notice, I want you to notice that the, the phraseology here that's been used twice in two verses back to back, if thou shalt hearken, first off it says, hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. The second verse says, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Um, if you will hearken unto what God is saying, if you'll the word hearken means to hear and do, hear and obey unto the voice of the Lord your God. The verse we're going to read from tonight is found in verse 11. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. How many can use plenty of goods? Plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Now, this is what, look at this. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. And, yes, and, and what? And, meaning, if you will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, the Lord will make you plenteous in goods. You can kind of skip all that other verses there and, and combine verse 1 and verse 11 together. You can combine verse 1 and verse 2 with any of the other verses, but we're just going to do it with verse 11. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. Uh, and with that, we're going to come back to this, to this outline here. But this just came, jumped off the page at me today. If you will, turn to Proverbs. In your Bible, look at Proverbs. Maybe you've got your, your YouVersion Bible app, and you're, you're looking along with us, and I hope you are. Thank God for technology. I think you won't hear this reported on CNN and not even Fox News, but what is so cool is the YouVersion Bible app is the number one downloaded app in the history of technology. I think now they have, Sister Gail, I think they have over 150 million downloads. 
Can you imagine that? 150 million times the YouVersion Bible app has been downloaded. That is awesome. Uh, what I want you to look at in the book of Proverbs chapter 2, remember, at the end of the journey is God. You'll make you plenty of and goods. You'll have a surplus of goods. We're going to get into that. Chapter 2, verse 1, My son, if thou wilt receive my words, watch this, and hide my commandments with thee. Now, this is a father talking to a son, but it's also God the Father talking to us as children. If thou wilt, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, watch this, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Keep watching. For the Lord giveth wisdom from his mouth, cometh knowledge, and uh, out of his mouth, I'm sorry, the Lord give, for the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Where... Right now, I'm talking to you. You're listening to my audible voice. I'm speaking. I'm putting voice inflections when I want you to really hear a point. I'm softening it when I want you to focus. I get loud when I really want to drive it home. Where is that sound coming from? It is coming from my mouth, but what is producing that sound inside this cavity that holds my tongue and teeth and gums? It's my voice. Uh, probably tonight. Sydney, is it tonight? Is it on tonight? The voice on tonight? Or is it just Tuesdays and Mondays? Monday and Tuesday night on NBC, The Voice, you know, the guys hit the chair, turn around, and The Voice, and they, they sing because of the singer, like American Idol, it's about The Voice. And so this, the, what's coming out of, the, out of the mouth of God is knowledge and understanding, but it's really the voice of God. The voice of God. Moses was telling the children of Israel, he said, if you will hearken, obey, hear and obey diligently, pay attention to the voice of God. Then we jump to verse 11 that says, and you'll be plenteous in goods. You'll be blessed coming in and going out. You'll be a high above all nations. You'll be at the head and not the tail. You'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in your basket, blessed in your store. Whatever your hands to do, God will command the blessing. If what? If you'll hearken to what you're hearing. You know, I find it interesting that wisdom, when you look at the benefits of wisdom, and, and, and if, you'll, if you'll look, and this is a totally different little sidebar here, there are some people that think that there is an appointed date in God's calendar, calendar when you are to die. I don't subscribe to that. And it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a salvation issue. I, I, it's pretty much guaranteed you're going to die. It's, I mean, pretty, it's, it's kind of like once you get in this thing, you're not getting out alive, okay? Uh, only two people have never died, and, and, and I hear that they're, they're going to get it too. But, um, <laughs> but there are some that think, you know, well, it's, it's, when it's your time, it's your time. Well, that's just not scripturally accurate. And, and I'll show you right here real quickly. Um, um, in verse, chapter 3, if you're there, Proverbs chapter 3, we're talking about the, the word of God. Now, when you hear commandments, that's not commanding you, I command you. No, no, these are not commandments of God's going to judge you. These are commandments. If you'll do these, your life will be blessed. If you don't do these, there's a, there's a curse waiting for you. It, chapter 3, verse 1, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Now, here, here's the... To me, this is one of many times in the Bible, it's in the book of Proverbs, you can find that it kind of debunks the idea that you have a set point in time to die. Here it is. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. If you can add length of days and long life, if you can add it by making choices, then you can subtract, you can subtract life by making bad choices. I mean, remember the, uh, within the last year or so, the Hollywood actor doing great in the, 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 the Fast and Furious movies, and he and his buddy were just being silly one night in this car that was just too fast for the road they were on. Uh, Paul Walker wrapped it around a tree and died and burned up in it. It was a foolish decision. I don't believe he went out that day to kill himself, but it was a foolish decision that the car he lost control of something he didn't had no business driving it that fast, wrapped it around a tree, burst into flames, his life was ended. And then... Today, 
My wife and I were sitting at McDonald's at, the, at Walmart. We went there to get some stuff for the church. And while we were there, I said, well, let's just go to McDonald's and get something. And while we were there, there were these, these two older ladies sitting next to us. And when I say older, literally, I thought they were both probably around maybe 75 to 80. That's older than me. One of them had already, the, the one lady went over and got the other one a drink, came back, and then she said, well, let me get your, and, and, and you could tell, I mean, I was like, wait a second, she's walked all the way over there, and she, was, she wasn't moving slow at all. She was very agile, but I just felt compelled to go bless her. I said, hey, let me go get your drink for you. You just have a seat in y'all fellowship. And so I went and got her Coke and brought it back to her, filled it up, brought it back to her. And then when they got done, they left. And I'm not going to tell you what she said because she was quite funny in her language. Um, but... <laughs> It was hilarious. I'll tell you after church. Anyways, she, she, she said, um, she said, you know, getting old is something. And, and, I, and I forget, she goes, yeah, she said, everything was good. I said, but when I hit 93, it just went. I'm like. You know, the Bible says, honor your father and your mother that it may go well with you and you may live long upon the earth. It's the first commandment with promise. So, so that, that's kind of a, a unique scripture there that, that didn't cost you any extra. But if anybody tells you that that's your life, that you just got to go, when you, no, you can decide how long you're going to stay. Just make wise decisions. But, but we're, talking about, we're talking about increase, and, and we're talking about a surplus of goods. And there was, there was, um, there was one here. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, verse 13 of chapter 3, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. She's more precious than rubies. All things that thou canst desire not be compared to her. Here's another one, length of days in her right hand. In her left hand, riches and honor. So I brought that up to tell you at the end of the journey is God, when you seek for wisdom, and Proverbs 4, 7 says wisdom is the principal thing. It's the numero uno top dog thing. It is the number one thing you need to get in life is wisdom. And with all thy getting, the NIV version says, though it costs all you have, get understanding. So when God says this, he says you need to get wisdom, get wisdom, get wisdom, get wisdom. Matter of fact, I like this, if you'll look in chapter 8 of Proverbs. It says, the Lord, wisdom's talking, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or the, ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. And just goes on and talks about how awesome wisdom was, or wisdom is. And when you pursue wisdom, a byproduct of wisdom is wealth and riches. In her right hand is length of days. In her left hand is riches and honor. And I know some people want to say, well, that's just rich towards the Lord. Absolutely it is. And when you talk about rich towards the Lord, Donald Trump can't scratch the surface. So in his left hand, in her left hand is riches and honor. So it's a byproduct of and wisdom, when you get to wisdom, Proverbs says, the hand of the diligent, the hand of the diligent maketh rich. And then it says, if you'll go after wisdom, if you'll seek for it as for silver and search for it as for a hidden treasure, when you go after wisdom, you'll find the knowledge of God. And you will not only find the knowledge of God, but the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth it comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. So at the end of the journey when you're looking for wisdom, you're actually going to find God. James 1.5 says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally, and abradeth not. So, the hand of the diligent maketh rich. <laughs> Check this out. Here we go. We're going to dive back into the, into the outline. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteous. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteous. If thou shalt, Deuteronomy 28, 1, we're back here again. If thou shalt hearken diligently, huh, there's that word, unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Jump to verse 11 now. 
the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods. 